发头发，太长了，你整个。To meet me in Taipei. This is Jacqueline. This is Janice. And we're so happy to be back. This is our season four, episode three, which is kind of late because there was an outbreak in Taiwan due to the COVID situation. It is still currently happening, but the numbers are going down. That's why we decided to film our third episode today. <laughs> it's yeah, it's been a really long one month. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm sick so, of quarantine. It's really fun. So for today's um. <laughs> So for today's topic, I believe there's a lot of people seeing our stories, asking questions, whether you have like any questions for us to answer, and we received a lot of them. But we kind of just like narrowed it down to ten questions because some questions are unanswerable, you know. <laughs> yes. So let's go to our very first question. Ta-da! Okay, so the very first question we have here is in Chinese: What you should know before you apply for college. 大学前一定要知道的事情 Mhm. There's two parts I kind of want to answer to that. First one is technicalities, and obviously, like before you do any sort of research, research your visa status, research what kind of environment the college is going to be in, what、mm -hmm. programs you want to study in, etc., etc., what kind of people that you will be coming into contact with. So you have to do all of that before actually even like applying to colleges in the states or in wherever you want to go. And then the other thing I want to touch on, that's what you need to do. I'd say like just keep your close friends close, and I, I'm sure like it's kind of just fake fun, but like once you go to college, a handful of People don't really go back into contact with like yeah, their high、true. school friends,、yeah. and like aside from us, you know, because like we went to an international school and we literally knew each other from like as a kid to until we're eighteen.、Mm -hmm. But a lot of people who have like transferred around or only been to a certain like high school for like four years, you don't really get the chance to see them again if they go off and move off to different parts of the country after、yeah. college. Keep in touch with them and make sure that you also have like a circle of friends that you can reach out to and talk to in、yeah. in high school after college because you. You never know like what connections you can make after、yeah. that. My advice for you guys. But like after you go to college, like you'll have like different group of friends, like for instance, like study group of friends or like partying group of friends, and there's just like a lot of different group of friends that you probably wouldn't combine them together. So second question: How long does it to take to prep for each episode from scratch? Depends for our season one episode, <laughs> like especially like dating one. I prepped it for like three days. That's. <laughs> So three days. I was kind of just like reading off what I wrote, so that's why there's a lot of like grammatical problems that I have to just like fix it myself. Also, there's something that I should not be saying. That's why it took like three days for me. But usually one episode. I would say just like a few hours because we conclude all the topics that we want to talk about. Yeah. So it's like the pre-recording part of、mm -hmm. our like audio podcasts. Usually we write down like what we have to say and like、mm -hmm. who's speaking first, etc., etc.、Yeah. That usually takes around like like here and there maybe thirty minutes. Afterwards. Yeah. And like the audio, that takes a couple of hours, like what Jackie、yeah. said. So add it all together is actually not that long.、You、have to think of like certain topics that we want to talk about and how to kind of go about it. It's pretty easy. Like if you guys have been noticing that we take turns to talk about like the intro part, you guys are actually yeah.、Watching. Like she's gonna like. <laughs> The shade. <laughs> For example, the last YouTube I started and she ended, but this episode she started and I'm in. So there's that kind of like planning that goes around it. But、mm -hmm. other than that, it's like quite easy. Third question: Why do Taiwanese like the U.S. so、okay. much? <laughs> Let's go off. <laughs> Let me talk about that. First of all, like my opinion,、yeah. I've always like growing up in Taipei. Anybody who has grown up in Taipei、mm -hmm. or like different parts of Asia, you can tell that there's definitely a white supremacy in、kind of. Taiwan, and、yeah. so much white superiority, and the whole West is the best, and we're you know、mm -hmm. like we're we're not up to par with them. That pisses me off because it's I actually grew into that concept when I was younger, and I didn't want to be Taiwanese. I wanted to be Taiwanese American,、okay. and I always thought white was best.、Okay. And after growing up, that pisses me off. I don't like that kind of mindset. I feel like people, like especially Taiwanese, who think U.S. are the best, are definitely more the traditional elders that never really been in touch with that much Western culture. That's why they will think that. But I feel like people who were like born in states or like having contact with people from America, like they know that there's so many flaws in America. But like you know, there's like pros and cons in different sides. I think there's a saying in Taiwan, it's like "Go away, the feeling of jungle." Oh, I was gonna post that. Oh, it's the last one. Yo, you know how much to have a speech out of that. There's a saying in like IP Man, IP Man Four. Oh, that's a really good movie. Yeah, it's a really good movie, and I would have fight. <laughs> Towards the end, IP Man said something, basically deciding that he doesn't want to bring his son to the states. That like 讲出了所有华人的心声 Basically, it's saying 其实想了一想，国外的外国的月亮没有特别的圆 Which is exactly what's gonna be on、yeah. my next Instagram post. You know. Yeah. <laughs>
So it's not always like America is better than Taiwan. There's some parts of Taiwan is like better than America. It's just like people have to discover themselves. Fourth question: Paradise Dynasty or Ding Tai Fung? <laughs> I've never had Paradise Dynasty and for those of you mm -hmm. who don't know, I've actually worked in Din Tai Fung for mm -hmm. like three years So I'm quite sick of the food um, <laughs> I'm done <laughs> I'm, I'm quite sick of um, Din Tai Fung mm -hmm. But what about you? Which I think Din Tai Fung for sure because Every time when I visit Din Tai Fung, nothing disappoints me And you know why? Because I have no idea what Paradise Dynasty is <laughs> So <laughs> I definitely go for Din Tai Fung it's, I don't know if there's one in Taiwan, but there's one in South Coast Plaza, which is oh, which the okay. mall. Okay. But definitely in Taiwan. Definitely. <laughs> number one, two, three, four, five, number fifth question. Which so, one? how's it going? Where? How's it going? Dude, man, like, I'm very happy to see her. And she is the first face that I've seen outside my family for mm -hmm. a while. I'm like quite happy about that. Yeah. I'm really sick of it. It's not bad, to be honest. I mean, it's not that bad. Because like there's so many food options in Taiwan compared to back when in the States when I was in quarantine. Like you literally cannot go out and there's nothing to eat besides like you just make your own food. But first of being in Taiwan is that every restaurants are like opening their menu. We'll discuss about that later on. But like there's so many food options. So I think I was like happy enough to stay home and have like a more scheduled routine every day. Like I work out and eat and like work and all that. So number six, how can I get in a Taiwanese university as a foreign? Like many I people, think, okay, I think like I do have like a few friends. They apply to NTU and I think it's easier for them to get in the college because the school wants a little bit more diverse, right? Yeah. yeah, so like it's easier for like foreigners to apply to like NTU, which is like the best college in Taiwan. I am pretty sure you don't have to take exams like Jesus. I don't think yeah, you have to yeah, take yeah, those. You, don't have to take you it. just have to provide your transcript of your schools, prove that you're a foreigner. And I think those are the steps. But like the details, I'm not sure. But if you really want to know, I can search it up for you. You know, be your counselor. Yeah, it's quite easy to get in Taiwanese colleges because like mm -hmm. they, they want um diversity, like Jacqueline said, and they, yeah. they really want foreign students. Yeah. It's easy if you're foreign. So next question. What it takes to develop self-discipline? I think this is a really great question. Since when I was young, my parents were always really strict. So they would be telling me like, you do this, you do that. Because of that, and also me just intrinsically, I'm just a more disciplined kind of person. I have my own rules and I set my own boundaries. So I wouldn't just try to like break the rules. I don't know, just like me personally. There is something that I just tell myself that I shouldn't be doing. But if there is a group of friends that are like pushing me doing something, I will see the situation and see okay, whether or not this is the right thing to do. But I feel like it is is just that you got to tell yourself that what is right for you and if you can handle the consequences you have to be responsible for yourself in the end what about you i, I think a big part of that it's like mm -hmm. we're pretty similar in that way because we each have our own like internal set of rules that we mm -hmm. kind of follow by and a lot of the times when, when you're faced with like a different like situation and you have to reevaluate yourself this yeah. a lot of that comes from like time with yourself because you don't really know what your boundaries are and what your limitations are mm -hmm. until you spend a certain amount of time with yourself and then you can kind of decipher like, hey, this isn't okay for me. Yeah. And like, you do what you gotta do to kind of process the. Yeah, exactly. The next question Do you like chicken nuggets? Yes. <laughs> yes, Bradley, we like chicken nuggets. And I actually tried the BTS chicken nuggets yesterday. It was really good. And I tried a Cajun sauce. Ooh. It was so good. spicy, but it was really good. Uh, I just had the muso. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I had that and the original sauce. Mm. Like, I just like the original taste of the chicken nuggets. Next question. <laughs> Favorite go-to restaurants in Taipei? Are you guys it's ready? all her. Are you guys ready? Because I'm about to go off. Okay, so because you asked this question, so I decided to give you like a list of places oh that God. I like going. And I kind of put them into categories. You can jump in if you want to. Street food in Taiwan, Hongdenrong, which is like some near like East District, Luoji Xiaochang. It's inside a night market, Zili. It's also near Dongshu and Yolgen Abe. This one is on our previous episode. We were at Dipa Street, and that's like around here. If you like burger, I'm not really a burger person, but there's this one place. Everywhere Burger Club. It's near Sun Yat Sun Memorial Hall for Indian food. Saffron 46 is. We still haven't gone. Oh my god, yeah. We should go. Well, it's, well, if, yeah. if, 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 if everything goes. Well, but it's inside um, Taipei 101. I feel like sushi. Oh, I feel like sushi. There's okay. There's a lot of sushi places in Taipei. They're all really fresh, but I would say like the prices are kind of high. But I think that's similar in all places. Omokase kind of sushi. It is inside an alley, and it's really good. Everything there is so fresh, but it's by far the most expensive one that I've ever been. Other one is called Yukuai. It's near uh, Taipei Arena, and the other one is for those who like American rolls. Like me personally, I love American rolls. It's called CA roll. 
California rolls. It's in Tianmu, somewhere near Shilin. And hot pot. So there's just two hot pot places that I like. And I would say they're more like fancy kind of places if you like going to those places. Juice Orange Shabu and Close Shabu, which is also inside the Lavita shopping mall center. And besides of those uh, hot pot, I really like spicy hot pot as well. Wanji Yeah, Malabu. I haven't been, but I really want to go. Hai Di Lao. Hai Di Lao is so good. And there's this Mala Tang place near Datsu. I don't know the name. Where DI is that? Oh, is it yeah. New? No, it's old. It's pretty old, but it's really good. Like, it's really good. And for drinks, Usulan and Tiramisu. Oh, Usulan, yeah. yeah. Tiramisu. Tiramisu is really good. And I also really like Qingxi. Like, I always order milk tea. Oh, really? Yeah. And Qingxi has like pretty nice milk tea. For Korean ones, do you think I'm kind of noisy? No, no, no. Talk. <laughs> I, I mean, I am taking mental notes too. So, for those of you guys who haven't been to Taipei, for Korean dishes, I haven't found any good ones yet. The one that I found the best, by far the best, is called Oven Maru. It's near oh. like. Have yeah, you been? I haven't been, but I've heard of it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I think they're known for like the chicken wings, mm -hmm. but I never ordered that. I order like spicy rice cake, those rice balls, some ramen. Totoli is actually really good. Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah. I have been it's to a that. Yes. Yeah. And the other one that we're craving for desserts Pure Bread Bakery and Miss B Bakery. Pure Bread, Bread Bakery is really good because I actually asked for my friend earlier, and at first I thought it was going to be really sweet, but I actually ordered their cheesecake. It was amazingly good. It wasn't that sweet, but it was just like, it's my. It fits my taste, but just right, you know? Just right, but I wouldn't talk about their service. <laughs> Pastry, Gerbread Bakery as well. I tried their sourdough, it's really good. There's a lot of cafes. If it comes into my mind, September Cafe, Hulu Mulu, Bass Cali Eatery, and Avenue. Pasta, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm not sure if this is Italian, Pastaio. Oh! There's one in LA too. Mm -hmm. Orange County? I think I think so. Oh, I, I think didn't so. know that. Because they offer like pasta cup. For Thai. I don't there's a lot of Thai food in Taiwan, but it's very Thai because it's easier. You're very Thai. Very Thai. And the last one, if you're craving for tacos, there's this place called Masa. It's really good. I tried it during quarantine. We're actually thinking about ordering later. It's so We'll good. show you guys if it's like... Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Thanks for asking me that question. I actually <laughs> want to answer that question. Next question. Career goals and dream jobs. Oh. Damn, that will have me I actually... Oh, will have me too. I just want that. Career goals, I I want to have like those like very powerful woman figure. That's what I want. Sure, mama. <laughs> but I don't know exactly what I want to go for. I used to want to be like anchor to you know reporting news and all that. That is what I'm kind of going for right now. But dream goal is to be able to present myself in front of the camera and to talk you know fluently without stuttering or that's my dream goals and. I don't know. Just I want to be more like on the anchor side. for now, but I also don't want to be a reporter. But that's you have to be a reporter before you become anchor. <sighs> it's so contradicting. I don't know. I was actually on the same path with her back in like college. I wanted to be a reporter first, and then like a news anchor or like mm -hmm. a sports reporter. Yeah, I love doing broadcasting, and I, honestly, I like being in front of the camera. Problem being, something in me kind of like just switched over, and I would still love to be in front of the camera. I think my goal, not exactly a career goal, or like for like whatever, but my goal is to be just like flexible with either my time and my money. Just do whatever I want. That is true. Yeah. Like one of the biggest things is that I'm able to work remotely, and which is what I'm trying to go for right mm -hmm. now. To work remotely, and then I'm able to like travel to say like London to meet Tom Hiddleston for like a month, and then I can travel to Hawaii to live for a month, and then New York for a month. That's going to satisfy me for like a while. I, I love to travel. That's my goal in in a short term period. So for your next question, oh. if the moon was made out of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it? Yeah, why not? Why not? Right? Yeah, why, why not? not? If it's edible, of course. Yes, why not? <laughs> food, it's free food. So for our last question, how did you guys meet your current or your last boyfriend? I met him through. Okay, I found him on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I actually found him on Facebook. I found him on Facebook and I was like, oh damn, he's cute, you know. <laughs> And then I just never really bothered to. I'm not the kind of person to dig into someone else's past. If it's not mine, then it's not mine. So. I'm trying to think of all the all the times you asked me, "Can hey, you look this person up?" So I saw him on Facebook, and then later on, my friend was like, "Oh, I can like you know, be the wingman or something." And I was like, "Oh, um, this guy, he's kind of cute, a darty and it's a darty, day party." Oh, yeah. I saw him. His name is a little bit dull. So at a darty, I saw him, and I didn't know that he added me beforehand. So apparently, he added me on Snapchat. Oh, he said he. He found me on Tinder. I just never really was on Tinder. Mm -hmm. I think I had the account, just never really deleted the account. And I was like, oh really? I didn't know. He was like, yeah, I super liked you. I was like, oh, okay, okay. And okay, that was the time when I was like, this guy's kind of iffy, because why would he super like me on Tinder? Tinder is- He super like you. Yeah, or well, Tinder, Tinder <laughs> after cute. that. And I was like, oh, maybe just, because he looks like a fuckboy too. 
Yeah. That was like whatever. And then after that, we started playing beer pongs. He was being very nice, very sincere. So I was like, okay, but you know, that's not my thing. But anyway, um, usually like, I think uh, just through mutual friends, I personally don't like dating people like right off the bat, like Tinder or Hinge. And yeah, no, no, no. we, you know, like if it's only based on mutual, like physical attraction, I can't do that. And like, I will have nothing to talk to you about. But if you kind of like nurture the relationship from like a friend's perspective first, and then it blossoms into like another level of the relationship, yeah. I'm always down. Usually always through mutual friends and it's safer too for women. Mm -hmm. It's not, there's no like stalking, there's no like, fucking serial killer vibes yeah so oh, there's like a lot of weird people nowadays but in general it's a lot more safe it's just usually how i meet all my boyfriends so those are all the questions that we have for you guys how many questions did we say i forgot 13 I, I, but yeah those are the questions that we organized into the list because some questions that we received were kind of i mean i can tell you in person but just not here yeah or i won't not tell really, you in person really, no, i don't no, no, cross no. it off the list <laughs> no Okay, so yeah. So these are all the questions that we have for you guys. And obviously if you guys, oh, we actually received a lot more, not questions, but like comments and also topics that you guys want us to talk about for our next episode. We're gonna like take that into consideration and we'll like go through it. So it's not like we ignore your message or whatever. We actually saw them. <laughs> yeah, we see every single question. Yeah. Every single one. <laughs> But, um, you know, like this is the end of this episode. We'll most likely do another one last YouTube clip before she leaves her to <laughs> stay, leaving me here. But um, we're gonna be on another YouTube clip, yeah. most likely indoors. And, like, don't worry, we've both been really careful. Both oh, her and, I've been really careful. Yeah, both her, like she hasn't gone out of the house. I only go out like exercising with a mask on. So we've all been very, very careful. I Just, think all the townies are doing really well. on Doing quarantine. very well yeah. on quarantining and like the lockdown. One, one. That's really short compared to the States. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. yeah, so like before she leaves, we'll most likely do another one. And then after that, we're going to keep going back to our audio podcast. Yeah. And once I go back to California to just kind of like sort things out, we'll meet up again. And I'll actually probably live at our house too. Yes. So we'll have more content to bring to you guys. Yeah. But yeah. So far, this is it. Thanks for tuning in again. My name is Janice. And my name is Jacqueline. And we'll see you guys next week on Meet Me in Taipei. 哎，为什么每次我只要上镜头，他都在讲他是故意的？